Then once again, thank you very much, Matthew, for introducing into the SPM methods of interest here. Um, I would like to talk about the um, SPM challenges of semiconductor failure analysis, of course, from the point of view of an uh, SPM manufacturer. Um, and uh, uh, Matthew, you gave me a perfect uh, keyword to sample preparation, because um, hereby I don't want to focus only on the pure or real SPM proce procedure, but uh, I want also to address the work which has to be done before and after the scan procedure itself. So challenges um, are linked to the questions. And here are given some, some of these questions in a kind of uh, chronological order. Let me switch on the laser pointer. Here we have, um, first of all, the question, um, how to detect the failed position, uh, followed by the question, how to gain access to the area of interest. Um, the third one is then the, the pure SPM procedure. The question is how to organize and execute the measurement that it can be successful. And then later on, you have to think about how to analyze the measured data. Um, are the drawn conclusions correct? And um, how to reproduce or confirm the measurements if there are some questions left? And um, if you are not really satisfied with that kind of results you have so far, then you have also to think about um, how to improve the SPM methods um, and um, to let no additional questions open. And um, this summary of questions here is already my agenda. Um, so I would like to go through all these questions together with you. So first of all, the question, how to detect the failed position. If you don't have a, um, a problem related to inline density inspection, which is the simplest case, because then you have directly um, your location given, you have to think about to localize your, your position of interest. And um, to do so, um, you first of all have to verify the failure um, you have to stimulate the failure. Um, uh, in between, you have to do a partial a decapsulation. You have to decide, um, is it useful to do this from the front side or from the back side? In most cases, it's useful from the back side. And in dependence on the package, you have maybe to do uh, a repackaging so you have optical access because all the, the, or the most um, uh, localization techniques are based on optical um, uh, interaction and um, so this uh, could enable then the, the, the rough localization. And uh, in most cases, we have to combine um, more than one localization techniques here are given some log in thermography, emission microscopy, thermal induced voltage ice alteration, soft defect localization, or optical signal probing, or some of these. And um, the goal of this is. To, to find or to establish uh, a clear electronic root cause hypothesis, because that you need to, to, to make this uh, failure analysis successful. And uh, if it is not, uh, if you cannot reach this hypothesis, then you have to think about to loop this procedure as long as you have established a clear hypothesis. And if you have that, then you can go back, uh, you can step further, you do a total decapsulation, um, you have to do a step-by-step -step deprocessing towards the suspect uh, Z-level. Um, maybe on the VIA level, you have to uh, think about starting uh, um, a kind of fine localization, maybe by um, SEM-based passive voltage contrast or even by um, atomic force prober-based current imaging. And um, one step further is um, uh, um, to, to, to prepare to contact level and to do a, a precise electrical characterization by using nanoprobing, um, atomic force prober based or SEM based techniques are here available. Um, the SEM based techniques have the advantage that you then 
um, can do a final precise localization by doing, for example, electron beam induced current or electron beam induced resistance change. And then you are able to precisely detect the area of interest. So you finally have a confirmation of a physical root cause hypothesis. Um, then again, the, uh, the next question, how to gain access to the area of interest, um, freestanding uh, cross-section, embedded cross-section, top-down preparation or wet chemical access uh, called lift-off is here available. You have to think about what is the best uh, for your um, kind of problem you want to analyze. Here on the right side is shown the schematics of an embedded cross-section. Very important here is that you have a um, backside electrical contact given by a copper plate where the dye or the silicon is glued to and uh, both is together embedded into the, um, the embedding material. And um, in any case uh, of these uh, uh, kind of preparations, um, we, uh, uh, we need to have clear orientation or navigation on the cross-section view. And that's why marker are required or are really necessary. Um, you can do this by, by laser or by, in, in most cases, cases you will uh, do markers by focus ion beam um, to have uh, a clear view that you know uh, where you are and uh, you know have to know where is left side, right side, and you need to navigate to, to uh, localize also your fail and your reference positions. And um, the reference measurement, if not um, on the sample surface, uh, um, exactly directly achievable, you have to think about um, uh, um, combining uh, a reference sample to the failing sample, and um, um, that sounds easy, but uh, quite uh, a lot of know-how and effort is necessary to reduce the gap between a fail sample and reference sample. Um, please keep in mind the surface characteristic here, the roughness should be below um, 0 0.2 nanometer. And if you have a large gap of glue between your reference and your, your um, fail sample, then of course, uh, this will, dif will be difficult to achieve. So the goal is to reduce this gap um, below 200 nanometer. And um, this sounds easy, but it's, it's definitely not that. Um, um, and this effort is, um, is uh, useful to spend because if the reference sample is only available as a real second uh, sample, then you have the problems which are already addressed. Um, um, you have to consider about different uh, oxide layers. Uh, you have different backside contacts. You have different stray capacitors, uh, capacitances, and um, maybe you have also a different tip condition um, or, or tip load, and this will definitely makes it difficult to compare. Um, uh, in the case of SSRM analysis, um, uh, later on I will show a, an example. You have to think about capping um, the area of interest, depositing platinum protective layer on top. Um, this is shown here. You have to cleave the sample very nearby to your area of interest, which is somewhere here. Um, the platinum layer has the clear advantage that you have a um, definition of the surface angel um, in the cross-sectional view. You have also a marking of the region of interest. You have a protection, and this protection enables reducing artifacts during the final focus ion beam preparation, which you have here on the lower side, on the bottom side. So then, after all this kind of preparation, now we come to the point where we are finally able to start the real SPM measurement procedure. And we might be happy that we are now at the point uh, where we can start with the measurement. And maybe we can't wait to get SPM results in order to confirm our hypothesis. But we must be still patient because it's very important now to spend some additional time here to, to find the best scan parameter. Otherwise, you, you will take the risk that uh, you will not get conclusive results. And in worst case, the prepared um, surface is damaged and we have lost all the time we have spent before since you have um, to restart the steps before. And if you just have a golden device, 
available, um, which is often the case, um, then you will even not be able uh, anymore to analyze the defect. And that's definitely what we have to avoid here. So after spending all this effort, then um, let's come to the um, to the analysis of, and here is given an SSRM example of a failing read-only me memory. On the top view, you see the overview image, um, uh, SEM overview image of a prepared cross-section in parallel um, to the word line. You see from the left to the right here on the top and um, perpendicular, uh, so to say, in depth to the plane of the monitor now, you would have the bit line orientation, um, but we have to say that the M1 bit lines have uh, has been removed already in order to reduce the artifacts here. Um, and on the lower side, you can see the SSRM result of this um, blue rectangle here, um, zoom in, and um, uh, you can see here uh, in white color is the area with the lowest uh, electrical resistance and, and the black color is indicating the regions with the highest electrical resistance. And it's clear here on top of the polysilicon, you have the cobalt, uh, the metallic cobalt silicide with the low resistance here. Um, the the light, light blue is the one with the, um, the, um, representing the polysilicon. And here the really dark area is a shallow trench isolation. And the, this ROM is a, a diffusion programmed ROM, a read-only memory. So in between the STI, we have the logical information, STI, so which means no active area uh, representing one. Um, diffusion channel between the STI uh, represents the logical zero. And here at bit line uh, number 91, we see a, a, a mismatch or a variation of the of the electrical resistance towards higher electrical resistances and this is an indication for um for a, a de decreased um uh, dopant distribution um, and then resulting elevated gate depletion with consequently shifted threshold voltage and increased ion which is in agreement with the electrical characterization so this is our fail position. And the next slide here um, will give you some more information um, by including um, um, a horizontal line profiles into the polysilicon word line here. We are able um, to detect in addition to this uh, main peak here, which is representing the fail position, we can see here in the uh, um, linear on the right and on the log logarithmic profile on the left, we can see that there are also some small peaks visible um, indicated here by the blue lines. And these blue uh, arrows here are uh, uh, exactly at the edge of the, of the channel. And this um, characteristic is linked to the grain sizes and of the polysilicon, which reduces the, um, the dopant density locally and this is completely in agreement with our uh, models, um, our theoretical models. So um, we have here verified our SSRM results in a good way, and we have explained the, the failure mode. Um, very nice, uh, this analysis, no calibration is required here. Pure qualitative analysis is sufficient in this case um, due to the fact that the reference um, location is uh, available directly within the prepared cross-section. But in general, one left. okay, I will speed up. But in general, the quantification of doping concentration um, is of interest. And that brings me um, to scanning microscopy, uh, a microwave, um, uh, um, uh, scanning microscopy, uh, scanning microwave microscopy and scanning microwave impedance microscopy which is in principle a further enhancement of uh, SCM, which we have seen before. The main advantage here is that we um, can clearly distinguish between P and N type um, by, um, by, by analyzing the high frequency signal, because here we, uh, we detect the reflected S11 uh, scattering uh, parameter um, by adding a, a high frequency network network analyzer 
and we are working in a range of one gigahertz up to 20 uh, gigahertz. And um, what we need is uh, here a calibration. The um, EFM data is uh, fitted to the uh, SMM data. We can find the, the parameter here and these parameter exactly give us the opportunity to, uh, to detect calibrated cap curves of capacitances. And um, then um, by um, a single measurement, we can uh, distinguish between P and N type here um, is shown the p-type decreasing capacitance is independence on the voltage. For n-type, it would be directly vice versa, as we have seen before. And the good thing is here on the right side, you have the calibrated capacitances in the monotonic behavior independence on the doping concentration. And that gives us the chance, together with the uh, parameter, to obtain absolute values of the um, uh, uh, dopant density. Um, this image um, is a very nice one, but I will skip this um, now for time reasons. So let me summarize um, SPM measurement are at the very end of a very long fail analysis flow. That's the reason why we spend, uh, have to spend high effort to enable SPM measurements. And um, it is clear that um, we need reliable uh, and uh, um, reproducible and conclusive SPM results in order to establish reliable semiconductor prudence and stable front-end processes. Um, we have um, to give clear feedback to the front-end, otherwise we cannot solve the existing problems. And um, of course, it's clear new products and new technologies require continuous improvement or continuous development of our SPM methods. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, uh, Andreas uh, and uh, Mathieu for your talk. So it's a time uh, for questions to uh, Andreas and Mathieu. So feel free to type them in in the chat and Mathieu will be calling you up. All right, so I'm giving over to Mathieu. So for right now, I don't see any questions. I had a question this is for the scanning microwave. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a separate technique, or it's integrated into the a it's integrated into the AFM? In principle, it is an add-on to uh, to an existing AFM. What you need is. Um, um, high frequency compatible equipment. So the, uh, the electrical conductors have to be high frequency compatible. You need to add the high frequency um, uh, uh, network analyzer, vector network analyzer, and you, um, you need to add a, a dopant profile measurement module. And um, with that the signals, um, you will feed your, your software and with the kind of calibration I tried to explain a little bit, then it is um, possible um, to obtain um, uh, uh, calibrated capacitances and these calibrated capacitances gives you the result um, or can be directly linked to the dopant concentrations. And um, in, in some cases, um, the qualitative results are sufficient but of course, very often there is additional um, requirement to to exactly state what, or not exactly, but to to find the the order of the um, dopant density concentration. Yeah. Okay. But in principle, it's an add-on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh